Exciting, very 21st century. It's almost as if the front of the car is lagging behind a little bit, but on the inside, they're making a big jump, moving very well. Here's the interesting thing, is, is that you do something like this, really brave, it's like dropping a stone into a pond, the ripples go out, and our perceptions, people's perceptions, change fundamentally, and what seems wacky and outrageous and right at the edges of futuristic style sinks into our subconsciousness and suddenly starts to seem normal. And cars like this, I think, will start to seem normal to us in a short while, really. When you design a car, it takes years before it gets out into the marketplace, and that's clearly also the case with Renault. They've taken a pitch that you were going to like them. I'm not sure yet. I quite like them. I don't know if I want one yet, but I'm pretty sure that in a year, I probably will. So, what type of cars will we be driving around in the future? With production vehicles becoming ever more weird and wonderful, sometimes it's tricky to distinguish the concepts from the cars you can actually buy. OK, guys, there is tons and tons of cars here to see. What I'm going to do is have some fun. I'm going to show you a range of vehicles, and I want you guys to decide whether you think they're going to be concept cars or whether they're going to be cars that go into production. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you both a lollipop. One saying real, one saying concept. And I want you to vote on them and tell me what you think. First up, it's the Peugeot H20. It's powered by a fuel cell, which means water's the only byproduct of this environmentally friendly fire engine. So, real or concept? That's based on a 206 chassis, the Peugeot 206. Well, right, okay, what do you think of it? It reminds me of the Batmobile, really. Batmobile? <laughs> she been drinking? <laughs> not, yet, not yet. What do you think? I can see that something like this will probably go in production about 50 years' time. Bill? Yeah, very stylish. I mean, you can see the typical Peugeot style in there. Yeah, quite nice. OK, vote. Concept, concept, concept. All right, you're all right. It is a concept car. But you never know what might happen in the future. Next up is another little number from Peugeot. It's got a heat-reflecting glass sunroof and a very open personality. Righto, guys. Now, Peugeot's call this one the Sesame. Any idea why? No, because it's the same colour as the seeds. No, as in open sesame. Now, watch this. Press a button, Ooh. twin electric doors. Wow. The idea of that is, in a tight space, you can get the doors open and you can still get access to all four seats. Good idea. Okay. What do you think of it, Cam? I don't like it. Why? I don't like it. I, do, I think it's too ugly looking, really. Okay, I think we've got enough of here. Yeah. Bill, like it? The roof feature, touch of air where the glass goes from front to back, it's yeah, quite nice. Makes it light and airy, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I like the car. The cars are getting smaller today, economical. I think it's an ideal car. I wouldn't have right. it if it was given to me. OK. You don't like it, but now give me your impression. Is it a concept or not? Um, I think not. I think it's... You think it's a real one? I think it's a real one. Real or concept? Concept. Real concept. Ooh. I think it's a real one. Do you? Yeah, I think it's a real one. Right. It's a concept car. Oh. Oh. If it's any help, if I hadn't known, I would have said it was real as well. No. The Mitsubishi Pajero Evolution is a radical four-wheel drive with a three-and-a-half-litre V6. But will we be seeing this piece of a machine on the road? Man's a bag of badgers, this is, isn't it? Well, tell me about it. Yeah. Mitsubishi Pajero Evo. I won't tell you too much, just tell me initially what you think of it. You first, Hill. Big. Fantastic. I could go with it anywhere. Cam, what do you think? I think it's fantastic. I really like it. It's very American-looking. It's fantastic. I would have this any day. Right. Bill, what do you think of it? I think it's a nice car. It's a look, come and look at me kind of car, really, isn't it? Right, what I want to know now, concept or real? Well, I'd like it to be real. Might it be real. Errol? I think it's real. What about you, Bill? Oh. OK. It is real, but it is unique. It's one of the first concept cars that's been put into production for rally use only. Next up, a sports coupe I'd love to be caught in. Well, guys, over here on the Chrysler stand, We'll find this, what they call a crossfire. Let's find out what you think. Errol? Beautiful car. When you first glimpse it, it looked like an Aston Martin to me, uh, when you look at it from the side view. Yeah. And, um, oh, it's, uh, I like it. You do? Oh, I do, I do, I Bill, do. Bill, what do you think? Awesome car. Best of all the cars I've seen today at the Motor Show, this is, this is gorgeous. Sexy. Love it, love it. Cam? I think it's fantastic. It's just classy. The colour's beautiful on it. It's just fantastic. Really it's nice. Thumbs up all round. Oh, I love very it. Nice, oh, yeah. Very beautiful nice, very nice. OK, testing time. Is this a concept car or is it going to be a production car? OK, spot on. It is a real car. This car is going to go into production. It's going to be released next year, late next year, and it's going to be sub 30 grand. It's probably going to be round about 29, so very, very cheap. Absolutely beautiful, isn't it?
Okay, we're now 26 minutes into the show and we've already managed to show you 78 of the cars here. So here's a quick roundup of the other 622. For the first time ever, an off-roader from Porsche. The Cayenne is aimed straight at Hollywood, which is handy really because he's a brand new car that could do with an immediate facelift. Meanwhile, proud parent Volkswagen has given Skoda a stretch Passat to call its own. Aptly, or just naffly named, this is the Skoda Superb. And it's got all the luxuries. You know, things like wood and leather and chrome door handles and all manner of traditional Czechoslovakian refinements. But the big news, and I do mean big, is in the back. Now, TV does have a habit of making people look bigger than they are, which in Dom's case can only be a good thing. But I am quite big, six foot three in fact. So I know a thing or two about rear leg room. And I tell you, there's tons of it in here. In fact, there's room for me to party with all my tallest, most freakishly sized friends. It looks like Volvo's come up with a must-have car here. Its first ever urban off-roader, the XC90, has barely hit the showrooms in the UK, but the order book's nearly full. It'll be the car for the 2003 school run. OK, so it doesn't exactly look radical, but new Sabs don't come along every day. And the 93 is all new, a serious sports saloon to go stalking BMW and Mercedes. It's a great drive. Hot hatchbacks are back, but the Alfa Romeo 147 GTA isn't so much hot as scorching a very large V6 engine under here will hurl it beyond 150 miles an hour once you've driven to the German autobahns, obviously. Volkswagen's Golf R32 has four-wheel drive and a big V6 engine. It's the fattest but fastest Golf ever. Mini, mini, mini. It's all you ever hear. This summer's must-have was the supercharged and rather super Cooper S. But never mind that. Because the truly fast Ford is back. The Focus RS. And this really is the hottest Ford you can buy. The Focus RS clashes head-on with the mighty Subaru Impreza Turbo. And while it lacks the Scooby's four-wheel drive, hard-won rally technology helps it tame the power. Righto, Jay, I know you married an Essex girl. What do you think the Essex boys will make of this? Do you know what, Dom? I don't think you need to come from Essex to appreciate this car. They've made us wait ages for this thing. Four years the Focus has been around, but as we always say, it's been worth the wait. It's absolutely terrific, this car. It's got razor-sharp steering, a razor-sharp chassis, a great gear change, and that uh, two-litre turbocharged engine is pumping out about 212 horsepower. I'd have one, and I'm from Ireland. For this year's luxury car, Brash is most definitely out. If you thought Jaguar was being conservative, then Audi's new A8 is large, high-tech, and very, very subtle. Open wide! Mazda continues to surprise with the RX-8 sports car, a techno wonder coupe with hidden rear doors, and starring in next year's X-Men blockbuster. It might only have a tiny engine, just the two seats and look a bit like a sucked sweet, but bless it, we really have taken a little smart into our hearts. Now, good things come in slightly larger packages with this, the Smart Roadster. In fact, this car is part of a bigger mini roadster boom. It's all about urban chic. The Smart Crossblade, the Daihatsu Copen Ford Street Car. Hmm, three dressy drop heads to cruise the boulevards. But which one do Richard and Dick wish they'd come up with? I reckon that this is a rollerblade on steroids, is what I reckon it is. It's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, I've never seen a car that looks more like uh, a vehicle that's escaped the designer's drawing board. It looks like a magic marker sketch. Yeah, you're right. That's Every car there. designer's got something like this in the back of the sketchbook, haven't you? Well, I don't know about you, but I feel a tad vulnerable. But don't you feel you'd have fun? I would have fun up to about 30 miles an hour, I think, but after that I'd be worried about seagull in the mouth. I would enjoy renting one of these on the Mediterranean coast, you know, hire a car, cruising around. Mm.